everybody and welcome to another video today we're flying the iFly 737 MAX 8 I've had many attempts of making a video with this airplane and uh, well I scrapped them all because well there were a few things I didn't like about them so here's a new video <laughs> today we're flying from Istanbul over to Riga and the flight is about two and a half hours I believe uh, yeah 237 so yeah, not that long of a flight considering we're flying at max, but um, yeah. So, basically, instead of telling you everything I don't like about this airplane, if there's something that I've noticed while we're doing the pre-flight, uh, I will mention it and talk about what I don't like about it and how I would change it. You'll also notice that I'm going to mention PMDG a lot. Just a disclaimer, I'm not a PMDG fanboy in any way, shape, or form. I just, there are things I like about PMDG a lot more than other developers that they do. Um, and specifically, today is going to be more about like con configurations, uh, saving airframe configs and general configurations or panel states, things like that. I think that's something that PMDG perfected. Um, I don't think there's any developer so far that does it just as good as they do. Um, so I'll get more into that once we ha reach that point, right? We have about uh, 45 minutes. We are on Vatsum. We'll see how long they are online. I think Tower's online. Um, yeah, Tower is online and Tower's also providing ATIS. So that's nice. Just to check real quick, I'm going to check the ATIS actually because it might be possible. Yeah, okay. We'll see. So, without further ado, let's go and get started. We're gonna start with the battery on. Standby power guarded, ultra flaps off. The wipers are parked, electric hydraulic pumps off. And you're down tree green. And we can apply the external power. We will now wait for the DUs to power up. Now, the first thing I don't like is the way the uh, switches work with guards. I personally like it better when you can manually uh, manipulate the guard or you can just select the guard and then the guard will automatically switch the position of the switch to what the guard would set it to. That's how I prefer it, just like PMDG does it basically. Our engine oil quantities are checked. Hydraulic quantities are checked as well. And the oxygen pressure is also sufficient, at least a thousand PSI, which is good to go. All right, spoilers disarmed. Takeoff config test. Laps up, indication agrees. We're gonna go ahead and set the parking brake. Normally, I'm pretty sure this would not work because our pressure here is less than a thousand PSI. So being able to press the pedals all the way down with with zero pressure would basically be impossible so i would not expect this to work but to, to give the benefit of the doubt um PMDG doesn't do it correctly either so we're gonna request ground um request to pressurize the hydraulics and they're gonna say sure go ahead nobody's working on it so we're gonna pressurize system b and wait for the pressure to increase to 3000 psi which is checked and then select it off again First officer in the meantime would have selected the IRS switches to NAV. Now here's a little system fault. First it should do the DC test or DC check test and then it would switch to align once the DC light just extinguishes. Here the align light illuminates immediately which is inaccurate from my understanding so far. Then the voice recorder is unfortunately not simulated. I hope they add that. The galley switches on, emergency ice lights armed, which are also not simulated, they don't work. I've tested it. Attendant, call, check, position light set as required. Perfect. Let's go ahead and open the cockpit door and we're gonna go to the EFB. Now the EFB is a little bit interesting. We're just gonna do everything uh, according to the SOPs. This is a actual Boeing EFB, so I don't dislike the EFB generally. There's just some things that would change when it comes to system or simulator settings. So item page, we're just verifying. Aircraft, tail ID, date, time, everything is checked, effectivity, everything is good there. System page, we'll verify, no faults, which is checked. And then we're gonna initialize the flight. 
we're then gonna, gonna go to terminal charts, but I've done that externally, so we're gonna skip that and go to performance. First thing I don't like is, and they changed this since the uh, pre-release alpha that they've given to content creators. It first was performance only, which is correct. That's how it should be. And then because people couldn't find where the payload was, they added the and payload. I personally wish they would switch it back to what is realistic, which is just performance, because now people know that the weight and balance is in here as well. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna go into weight and balance. I'm gonna go and set my payload right now so it's zero on both. And then fuel, we're gonna set our fuel that we need for the flight, which is, I'm gonna round up to 10.2 tons, that fuel. The issue with, the first issue that I have with panel state saving is it does not save your fuel or your payload in any way, shape, or form. It always has a default fuel and payload saved, and it does not load up what you've saved it with. So for example, my cold and dark state that I use, um, I saved it with about three tons of fuel and no payload, but if you load the state, it will not uh, set that anymore, if that makes sense. That's something that PMDG does correctly, or does nicely, excuse me. Also with GSX integration, you can load fuel in real time with GSX, that does work. Um, but what doesn't work is boarding. So passengers and cargo, you need to do through the weight and balance menu here. We're gonna go complete and let's go ahead and do some preliminary calculations. Now here's also the thing, it's actually not correctly simulated here. I'm gonna show you here in a second. Normally I would expect optimum here and optimum here. But that's not simulated, that's the first thing. And the second thing, I'm gonna go ahead and check real quick the weather. 1028, 1028, outside air temperature. 16, winds, 05015. But if we're gonna calculate this, it's gonna give us obviously what our takeoff gross weight is. The first thing that should work is I should be able to leave this blank. It should be blank and when I select calculate, it should give me my maximum takeoff gross weight that I can do for, depending on the um, on the conditions I'm currently in. So my takeoff performance limit, it doesn't do that. What I can do, however, is I can put a ridiculously high number in here, which makes no sense, calculate, and will then give me 85,000 kilograms of my maximum allowable weight. I guarantee you, it doesn't matter what kind of conditions you put in, it will always be 85,000 kilograms, which is inaccurate and incorrect. First of all, it shouldn't be 85 in the first place. It, the maximum should be actually your maximum structural weight, so it should not exceed that. But either way, the calculation is incorrect. It's never gonna be 85,000 tons, or 85,000 kilograms and 85 tons. Next, we're gonna go to landing. We're gonna do the same thing here. This is, I think, good enough. I think it's pretty accurate. I haven't done anything too crazy with it. But here we're just going to check what our landing weight, maximum landing weight can be. Runway 18, condition drive, flaps 30, air conditioning on, anti-ice off, brake, we'll just use standard 2, UREF plus 5. And then we're going to go um, winds, all right, winds 210 at Six. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. This is meters per second. And that's the next thing I don't like is that um, you you can make your settings from the EFP separate from your aircraft settings. So basically the settings here, let's go back to system page and application preferences. You can see you can switch, uh, sync with the AC gauge. So if the aircraft is at the kilograms, which it is, it will set everything to the metric system or you can select separate. The problem is with separate, kind of like with PMDG, is you'll need to change it every single time, um, which is kind of ah, not so fun, right? Celsius go knots, meters, meters. Okay, let's save that. So if we go to performance, now we can do six knots. Now we can do knots. Um, I wish these options could be saved with the airframe. So these options here, these individual options are part of the airframe and not part of the EFB application preferences. That's my wish. But um, we'll see if that happens. Probably not. 
most things don't happen, unfortunately. QNH 1024. All right, calculate and our maximum landing weight is 69.3, which is our structural maximum landing weight. For a quick turnaround time of 67 minutes, we are allowed to be 80.2 tons. Who knows if this is accurate as well, but um, makes sense about it's generally over what your actual structural weight is, so it's it could be correct. I didn't check the um, the uh, tables or anything like that, but I, I think this could be correct. Only thing weird thing here is you have a landing weight field, uh, which is weird, but it's okay. Go and do the uh, fire test. Checked. That also works. And squibs. Also checked. Which is good to go. So we'll do the flight deck access system check. And check all the documents, things like that. PA system test. But that's all not simulated. So we're going to skip right to what the first officer would do next. Verify all the guards are closed. No abnormal lights. Everything's checked. EECs are on. The rest is checked. Broadband switch, I wish there were to be a click slot for it. Might not be simulated, but at least a click slot would be nice because this would normally be switched to on. The flight recorder system does not work correctly. You should I would expect the off to illuminate at this point, and then I would do the test, the light should extinguish, and then I'll switch switch back to normal and the light should illuminate again. Mock airspeed works. The next thing, stall warning. Um, I think in the next up release they'll fix at least one part of it. And that part is, if you do the stall test, you should see the column shake. They're missing that animation, but I think in the next update they have uh, added that animation. The second part that's not incorrect, uh, that's not correct, sorry, is that these two work, at least in the iFly version, work instantly as soon as you have power. In the real airplane, it takes about four minutes for them to power up um, before you can actually do the test. Alright, recall is checked, we can cancel, circuit breakers are all checked and pushed in, they're not simulated. But what is simulated that we would check is the the uh, manual gear extension door or hatch. That is closed, which is checked. Alright, we'd initialize A cars if that was simulated, but that, so far it isn't. They said they will soon after uh, initial release, so that's fine. All right, so we're gonna continue with the FMC. This is all checked, position in it. GPS left position, paste, root. And we'll go Turkish, two, 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 alpha, request. Departure tree five left is what we're expecting. Here's the thing, normally in performance in it, I would enter in my zero fuel weights and then anything that's on the right side. Here's why I'm going to put in the reserve fuel as well. Now let's talk about wind request. Wind request does work in this airplane and you may have, you may think that it doesn't. I use by the way the API version, there's API and text version, I use API. As long as you can execute it and it says loaded for flight level whatever, then you know it's going to work. Just execute and it's in there, even though you don't see them. So you, it's going to be like this. You're not going to see the winds. So you know what? I'm going to do it now. I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to request the winds. You can see cruise wind flight level 340 uplink. I'm going to execute and now they're technically in here, but you can see you can't see any of them. So what does that mean? Well, there's something weird about this uh, airplane. For me, what is logical is in order to request winds, you only need to put in the cruise flight level because that's all you need to know or that's all the FMC really needs to know in order to request the correct wind data from the correct flight level. I believe the way PMDG works, and I can test this later on, is the PMDG requires your cruising level and your zero fuel weight, as far as I know. I don't think there are any other requirements in order to request winds and to see them on the flight plan page or the route data page. In this airplane, in order to request them, I don't know what you need, 
but I do know what you need in order to see the wins that you have requested and loaded. And that is you need cruise level, zero fuel weight, and the reserve. Makes no sense to me, but that's how it works. So we're gonna plug in those values. We're gonna plug in basically the entire performance init page. Our expected zero fuel weight is uh, 65.3. So we're gonna put 65.3. And by the way, we can start boarding now. Let's go ahead and go GSX and request boarding. boarding requested. We're gonna turn on the seatbelt signs. And then we're gonna put in the reserve fuel, which is 2.9. Perfect. Top of cruise data, 009 at 18. And deviation is minus one. Execute. Now we go to legs page, root data, and now you can see the wind data is there. Or at least it's showing. It's always been there. It's now, now you can see it actually. So just keep that in mind. So we go to VNAV. Verify some data here. Next page. This checked. Progress page. Distance. 1078, 1079 is checked. 4.3 flight plan calculates. 4.0. I have to say, this is probably this and Phoenix are the most accurate um, when it comes to fuel burn compared to Simbrief. PMDG always has like an offset about three percent. Um, two, 2 to 3 percent, but here if I fly and the Phoenix are, well that's cool, are pretty much perfect spot on when it comes to fuel burn. It's really, that's really commendable. I really gotta give props to that because that's not easy to do. Alright, progress, FMC comm doesn't work, ADC doesn't work, so these two don't work just yet. Probably once ACARS and CPDLC have been added. Legs page, we don't need to do anything here anymore. We already did our root data and then we'll go to fix. I'm gonna go LTFM. I'll normally put our put my engine out procedure, but um, I can't really do it correctly here because we're departing on a runway that does not have an ILS. Because normally I would use the ILS identifier and base it off of that, but I can't do that. So we're just gonna do 25. And that's checked and fine. Then go to root, root copy, go to root two. Rivals, respect. I would expect tree five right in case of a return. That's checked, and then go to legs page root two legs. I'm gonna copy gap D Hello. all the way up to here. I'm gonna delete FM, and that's sufficient for me. Go back to root one and performance page. So this is normal, and we're going to continue with the overhead scan. All the lights are normal. Only low pressure lights should be illuminated here. The rest should be extinguished by now. These should be dim. This should be off. These should be off. That's checked. Everything here is normal. Everything here looks normal as well. Everything is correct. This is all checked. Checked. Everything is normal here as well. Expecting to climb to uh, what was it, 360 or 340? Oh, even 320 only. Oh, we're step climbing. So 340 is our maximum today. 340. Our landing elevation. I think there's also a fault within the aircraft. So if we go to legs page, and we go to our runway arrival or runway, it says 40 feet, but in reality, it should be your elevation of the runway plus 50 feet because this is the altitude you should be according to the threshold which is always 50 feet above ground so it, I believe this should say 90 and so we would do whatever it says here so it should say 90 minus 50 is 40 and the closest is 50 so I'm gonna set 50 landing elevation today is a odd day so we we'll use system left and the rest is good first officer continues his flow I'm just going to set whatever makes sense for him. That works. This is all checked. No V speeds is normal. 1028 is checked. I'll do GPWS test. Slide slope. 
Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Well checked. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Obstacle. Obstacle. C. Pull up. Sink rate. Pull up. Don't sink. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. Glide slope. Bank angle. Bank angle. Approaching minimums. Minimums. 2,500. 1,000. 500. Wind shear. Too low. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. 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 Pull up. Caution. Obstacle. Caution. Are obstacle. Identified. Obstacle. Obstacle. Pull up. All right, and TCAS test, verify the pattern, it's checked, deselect terrain, that's also a bug. It, the GPWS test selects terrain automatically, I don't think it should do that. We'll check ILS. System test okay. Looks good. Hello. IOCE is the correct identifier, and 354 is set. Our two guys system test pass. That's good. And now the first officer will do his flow. Which is all checked as well. Hello? 25, 354. Initial climb we can expect. Yeah, 5,000. And our minimums, in case we need to return to runway 35 right, will be 510 feet. Okay. That's checked. Everything is checked here. This one looks good. ISFD is checked. This is set to C. Fuel flow reset. The rest is checked here. Age of two, and that's good to go. All right, pre-flight checklist. Oxygen test at 100%. Navigation transfer and display switch is normal. Auto window heat on. Pressurization mode selector. Auto flight instruments track. Two four five two four. Sorry, two four six two four six. Altimeter is one zero two eight one zero two eight set. Parking brake is on, engine start levers are idle detent. Sorry, correction, cut off. Uh, Pre-flight check is complete. We'll just wait for boarding to complete and final loading to arrive, and then we'll continue with the flows. We'll also get I for clearance and all that good stuff. So we'll see you then. All right, so boarding just completed. Let's go ahead and set up the payload for today. Um, we are a full cabin, 178. Cargo. 4.4, so we're going to put 2.2 on each end. The payload. The 65.3 stays the same. Which puts it at 75.3 for takeoff weight. Ops 5, we're going to go with 17 degrees and 1027. Calculate. Alright, 83.7, 81.3. Alright, take off 1, 42. Ops 5. NADP2 is checked. 50, 51. Alright, all within one knot, so we're gonna go ahead and set those. 155, it is an RNAV departure. You can have an LNAV can be armed. AP has been running for two minutes. Ice coming on. Dual bleed is checked. Ah, there's no airport map here. 
I'll have to rescan the stuff. I'm going to quickly do a departure briefing, welcome the passengers on board, and then now uh, we're pretty much ready to push back. So, we'll see you at the before start items. Alright, so I'm going to go and call pushback from... Before start items. Six point four units is set. Like deck door closed and locked. MCPV to one five five heading three five four altitude five thousand. Take off speeds one five zero one five zero one five five. CDU brief light completed. Rudder and aileron trim free and zero testing. Take off briefing completed. Anti collision light is on. The four star check is completed. Is there a guy? No, he's not doing anything. Release parking brakes, please. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Right, starting number two. Signal given. Pull up. Pull down. Neutral. Pull left. Pull right. Neutral. Butter. Pull left. Pull right. Neutral. All right, she's gone. Uh, before taxi checklist, generators on, propeed on, anti ice off, isolation of auto, engine start switches, continuous recall, check auto brake RTO, engine start levers, idle detent, flight controls, check ground equipment clear. Before taxi checklist completed. So we're clear to taxi, release the brakes, right, taxi light coming on. Oh, let's get out of here. Before takeoff check, the slaps, 5 green light, stabilizer trim, 6.4 units set.
We now have speed. Laps one. Laps up. And after takeoff checklist. Engine bleeds on, packs auto, flat landing gear up, laps up, no lights. After takeoff checklist completed. Runway uh, 180 is still active. Uh, top descent is in 120 nautical miles. Distance is 247. That puts our nautical miles about about our distance about 120 to 130, uh, which is about right, which is about checked. Recall checked. And we're going to get our weather. H1024 will pre select. Alright, so our en route, all operational, dry, 1024, temperature 8. Calculate. We're going to use auto brake 3. Calculate. That's good to go.
Alright, I'm gonna do the approach briefing, then the descent checklist. Um, and then, uh, yeah, no ATC currently, but there is ground online. Yeah, let's switch to the RNAV approach. Once we reach the approach point, we can uh, set in our deviation, which is in progress page. We'll set our RMP, it's going to be 0 0.3, our vertical our RMP is going to be 125. We're going to set that all once we get close to our approach. So we'll see you then. Approaching minimums. No runway lights, that's not cool. Minimums. Continue. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. And the nose, nose just always wants to come down. I literally had full back stick.
Boarding requested. Shut down checklist. Fuel pumps off, probe heat off. Or auto in this case. Hydraulic panel set. Flaps up. Parking brake set. Engine start levers cut off. Weather radar off. Shut down checklist completed. That's wild. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with this airport. I'm going to go ahead and investigate that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any additional suggestions or recommendations, please let me know. And we'll see you all in the next video. Until then, peace.